about donor area management in all hair transplants and FUE hair transplant that we do every day we have to be very careful when it comes to donor area management when a patient comes to us for a consultation or act for actual procedure we have to assume whatever is his age whether he is 25 or he is in between 30 to 40 or even if he is 55 plus so we have to uh, the age is the most important factor which determines the longevity of hair transplant because in the second and third decade of life mostly everyone would have very good donor area however if somebody has good donor area even beyond 50 years of age that means that's the actual donor area and it is not going to miniaturize further however if somebody is less than 35 years of age and they have good donor at that particular age we should not be very happy and optimistic because there is a chance that in coming decade or two decades of life those donor area may undergo miniaturization so in the nutshell we have to assume that every patient will become grade 6 and 7 uh, baldness and um, the family history of their fathers, their grandfather or their uncles is also important because generally the pattern of baldness is inherited uh, within the families. So like if father was grade 4, there is a likelihood, although there is not a 100% rule, but there is a likelihood that the son will also progress till the grade 4. So having said that, the surgeon on the day of surgery and on, at the time of consultation also, he has to assess the donor in a holistic manner which includes assessing the donor density, assessing the hair caliber and that will be the final determinant of the results. The final volume of the transplanted hair will depend upon that. Now when we talk about donor density, uh, we have to see number of hair, number of grafts per square centimeter and uh, we have to mark out the whole donor area into multiple blocks so uh, the total suppose uh, the requirement is 3000 grafts or maybe 2500 grafts so we have to mark out the donor area into right and left side and ma then make multiple blocks and then divide and decide that from which block will be harvesting how much to ensure that the uniform extraction is carried out and there are no patchy areas at the back Similarly, the upper border and the lower border of the extracted zone should be extracted in a wavy manner. So, once the transplant uh, has been done post-surgery, he will not have a straight zone of uh, thinning. It will be uh, merging with the hair above and below. So, now this is a typical case of over-harvesting. We can see lot of consecutive extractions have been done. The hair are very sparse. So, we can see the hair are very sparse and uh, the uh, scars are collaging. So if you look at the lower side just above the nape of neck, the extraction is so much that all the scars have collaged. So though the patient has a Caucasian, is a, he's a Caucasian patient, uh, the scarring is less but uh, because of uh, this extensive extraction there is so much of thinning. So in this scenario even if the patient grow the hair long, still the thinning would be very evident. So this is something which should be avoided. In this patient probably he had curly hair so the transactions have been high and so the th donor is so thin. So now it is practically so thin that it should not be touched again again for further extraction. So uh, I'll show you another Asian patient. So there is a patch of thinning and uh, because there has been a non-uniform extraction, lot of grafts have been extracted from one area which has led to the patch. So the only uh, uh, way for this patient to hide this patch is to grow the hair long. So this is another patient, he's an Asian patient and uh, you can see how much the donor has been thin thinned out throughout and uh, we can see more skin and less hair and uh, it is looking very sparse and uh, the, again the patient is stuck he is not able to camouflage this thinning even in spite of keeping long hair so the, this kind of overzealous extraction should be avoided we should have a holistic approach patients with poor donor we should go for a high hairline a triangular shaped hairline in such patients we should not be overzealous in reconstructing the temporal points so this is another example of excessive donor thinning and then another donor area that we should discuss is the beard so when we extract the beard at our center we restrict ourselves to the submental and the submandibular zone and generally this is the jawline the extraction is carried out below the jawline now in this patient we can see linear scars 
these linear scars are due to consecutive beard extraction and all those uh, probably a thick punch was used so all those tiny minuscule scars have coalesced to become one linear scar so we can see two linear scars running parallelly so this is an extensive beard extraction and uh, uh, adjacent extractions have led to these kind of scarring so our approach in beard hair extraction is that we first of all mark out the area below the jawline and then we make a wavy pattern above and below so that we don't have one particular patch which is more and more obvious so uh, uh, we after the beard extraction patient can get, keep a clean shave or if he wants he can take keep a long beard also so all those options should be discussed when it comes to the results of beard hair they are variable in some people it grows very well densely and blends well whereas in other people it grows slowly and gives a sparse coverage so uh, every hair transplant patient is different and every donor quality is different so the approach has to be customized and individualized to each patient's expectations and again the summary is do no harm so this is the basic rule that we should not end up damaging the donor more so that the patient is scarred for the future uh, forever uh, in future so the donor is finite in a patient through for his lifetime so if he has come to us for a surgery we should not think of just this sitting we should think in a holistic manner because the baldness is going to progress even if he is grade 6 he is going to lose the temporal humps and they are going to shift down even if his crown is bald the crown may still extend in the towards the periphery so thinking that he may need future sittings we should do as conservative extraction as possible and the principle is to achieve maximum coverage in minimum number of grafts and uh, it's not and every time we should assume even if the patient says that they they are going to come for uh, second or the third sitting still we should assume that they will not come and keeping that in mind we should do the natural dense work with maintaining the absolute donor cosmesis uh, uh, for a long term result because in future if they are stuck and they can't come for another sitting they should not land up in a situation where their density is looking unnatural so all those things should be kept in mind